Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here. Welcome back to some EVE Online. Welcome back also to Egita, the Wall Street of EVE Online. Because in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about the opportunities that we missed uh, mostly when it comes to uh, selling stuff and speculating on the market uh, with the Lifeblood expansion. So this video is, is aimed a little bit at, uh, at newer players that want to get into trading, that want to get into the market for EVE Online. And... Uh, it must be said, the player-driven market of EVE Online is something unique in the gaming landscape. Uh, doing this on the regular is actually quite time-consuming and, um, and is not very easy. Making money in a player-driven market is super competitive and you really need lots of time and lots of knowledge, lots of spreadsheets in order to actually make the most out of that. But there is this one exception to the rule and that is of course when the developer changes something in the game that creates more market opportunities that are somewhat predictable and and can really make you lots and lots of isk uh, in EVE Online here for instance and this time it was of course a lifeblood expansion um, one thing is I completely mistimed it so I was aiming for uh, a market bottoming out August September so that we would then have a winter expansion in like uh, November December but CCP came out with the winter expansion in October before the winter and so my personal timing was off but with just a couple of days to go until the expansion actually comes less than a week uh, I think it could be nice to uh, to take a look at what happened what's been announced and what impact all of that has given on a uh, as a hat on several on several markets and so the two big components of the expansion that were announced were first of all of course a new structure to be released the refineries which would be needed for all the moon mining and for the reactions so that is bound to be a lots of demand when it comes to uh, the uh, materials needed to create those structures and the other one is of course the revamp of the moon mining mechanic itself going from a uh, very passive uh, mechanic in EVE Online to an active one that can be disrupted uh, without having to go through boss bashes. Uh, you can also steal from one another, uh, which might disrupt the flow of, of Tech 2 production and does also have an impact on the market. So the first winner is uh, the one that I basically was planning to go for, but completely mistimed. Those would be the uh, advanced PI materials. So if we go for planet materials these broadcast node integrity response drones nano factories are basically the pi building blocks that you need in structures in evo line and especially in the refineries as well so if we just take a look at the charts here, you can clearly see that the broadcast nodes have gone up in price up to 2.75 million and are currently sitting very close to one year high. And so this run up here, which started July, August, September, would have been a very nice opportunity to uh, go from maybe 2.1 million to 2.7 million in value. And as I said, I was expecting the bottom to be here, August, September and I missed it by a month because of the timing of the expansion, unfortunately. Here are the integrity response drones. Uh, one thing to note, of course, timing is very difficult in these situations because lots of other players are doing the exact same thing. So getting in early enough is always a good choice sometimes we don't really have all the information just yet but yeah making calculated risks uh, is really what you need to do to get the most out of it i think here early september and we can see the same for the broadcast notes that this went up in early september was basically when ccp put the blueprints on the test server a massive amount of information can be grabbed from the test server and that basically confirmed that yeah we would need these types of materials for the refineries and everybody jumped into preparation mode causing here again early september nice jump up from nano factories if you time this right in early July, 1 million to 1.5 million. 50% profit right there. Organic mortars, again, same jump up here in September. Here is the recursive computing model. Went up to 2 million from, that's, that's really not that much. Uh, to be honest, probably the least performing one. It's already back down to like 175. Self-harmonizing power cores though, pretty nice uh, sitting at a uh, one year high 3.25 million coming from around 2 million at its lowest point that's again more than 50 percent in profit that could have been made sterile conduits as well and wetware mainframes 
uh, has recovered a little bit but also went up to more than 3 million ISK and so this one was actually the easiest one because we've had structures before uh, and, and we know that well this will normally require these advanced PI materials which is also the reason why you're seeing this speculation happen so early when it comes to uh, to these advanced PI materials but uh, what I'm trying to do here with both Eve talk and videos like this is to learn from all of this yeah I play online for quite a few years but I'm still learning every single single day and uh, here uh, basically what I know now is that when a new structure is um is announced by CCP uh, to be released in the far future, it's probably your time to start uh, averaging your uh, your buys um, at that point. Well, you should of course give it a, a room to uh, drop back down a little bit, uh, but if you would have, uh, let's say, start buying a bit in March, April, May, June, July, and then even in August and in September, you'd be sitting golden on all of the stuff that you would have bought. So this is basically a plan that you can start to formulate now uh, for the next set of structures that are probably in development. We know that CCP still wants to have some propaganda towers and some special information uh, structure for, uh, for NLSEC as well. So there's still lots of potential there and this is one of those examples of uh, predictable market profits that could have been made. Timing is pretty important, of course. That's still basically the lesson that I need to learn. A second material uh, that was also to be expected is the advanced uh, moon materials because there is uh, potentially a disruption. This one, uh, I never really took the gamble. Let's see if I can find them here, advanced moon materials. The reason I never really took the gamble is because this could still go either way. Uh, you will see here that uh, most of these are sitting at one year high prices. Definitely from, from uh, like uh, a year ago, uh, some of them have doubled in price. So definitely not bad, but um, if the, the uh, moon mining gets set up very quickly and there's not too much conflict, this could all end up being a bubble uh, if the supplies, for instance, do increase slightly because of better yields, for instance, and uh, more stuff gets brought to the market. All of this still has the potential to be a bubble. But here again, we do clearly see, uh, for instance, Fernite Carbide going from 150 to more than 200, Ferrogel the same. Uh, increase in price in September and this one is a little bit later uh, because we got first of all we got the information on uh, possible moon distributions much later than the uh, blueprints for for the new refineries um, and of course it's it's a bit more of a risky one here uh, hypersynaptic fibers normally costing less than 10,000 isk currently selling for 20,000 isk that's not bad that's a doubling in price uh, if you if you still have those in stock nanotransmitters also sitting pretty nicely at a high point nonlinear metamaterials also at a high point and here whoa uh, phenolic composites 1500 currently selling for almost 3000 is doubling in price right there and so this one um, was to be expected uh, but it remains a little bit of a gamble and so depending on the actual results after the expansion we might be in for sustained higher prices especially if there's lots of pvp disruptions and that is will actually be a mechanic that is, is often targeted first in a war yeah we might see some serious disruptions and some higher prices on the other hand um, if the large alliances get everything up and running very smoothly and uh, and there's not too much competition for all that stuff we might see some bubbles be forming in this as well which makes it all very interesting of course and and very unique but right now if you'd bought your tungsten carbide uh, in in july uh, for 150 or less than that you're selling it for 250 pretty much very very nice profits uh, that can be made here as well again all because of what ccp has been doing um, a natural reaction uh, when the uh, the base materials for tech 2 production go down is of course that we could have taken a couple of gambles on tech 2 ships i check those regularly with eve talk and so let's take a look at some of these here here is the Ares Interceptor, definitely at a one year high, costing probably 75% more than they normally do. Uh, the Claw, this one actually showcases the uh, the problem that taking that gamble 
um, um, has has met uh, this year. So it was one that, that I was personally looking into and planning for. But then here in August, you see this massive uh, spike for the claw going to up to almost 60 million isk. This was actually when the Imperium deployed uh, into another region to go to war. This disrupted mining a little bit, but uh, interceptor fleets were very popular with them, causing this massive spike, creating this incredible uh, sell opportunity at the time. Basically, the market never recovered to really low prices before the run-up to the expansion where people would start to probably bring fewer uh, of these ships to the market, start to hoard them a little bit and, and wait to see what the impact of the expansion is going to be, meaning that we are ending up with higher prices. But across the board here again, for all of these smaller uh, Tech 2 ships, we can once again see that many of them, here is the Flycatcher for instance, uh, are currently selling for a really good price. There is one note to do, of course, on these Tech 2 ships. Uh, here for the Ares, it's not so bad, but the volumes aren't all that exceptional. And it's not like we're selling thousands of these ships every day either. Once you're going from materials to ships, that's where volumes do play a, a pretty big role. And you have to be a little bit careful not to overextend yourselves in the buys. When materials, right, uh, as we've seen with the advanced PI materials, I think that just hoarding it up along the way without going overboard but continuously buying at their low points is a pretty good idea uh, having hundreds of these ships ready uh, is, is probably not a good idea because you're very unlikely to be able to sell them but an opportunity pretty obvious even the current stealth bombers which normally go for around 20 million isk are selling for 34 million isk you can see the lack of supply so it's not like i mean you can also see that the volumes are down and thus as a result here these higher prices just nobody is willing to dump their take two ships right now knowing that right around the corner there might be a serious disruption to take two production meaning that they'll be able to get perhaps even better prices and so you're seeing these lower volumes but these higher prices it was a slight opportunity but it remains uh, quite a bit of a gamble as well uh, just taking a look at some other tech 2 ships this might be interesting because i generally take a look at the smaller ones because they're easier to get into smaller um, smaller price range as well and they're flown quite a bit more often and so they're lost quite a bit more often as well but even for the cruisers lots of them like the sacrilege is currently at a one year high uh, i don't think it's performing as well as the cell bombers and the um and and the interceptors but it's definitely right there at a one year high so if you could sell some now that you've purchased through the year here you're definitely having a pretty nice price Cerberus is pretty high as well uh, here the ishtar pretty damn good too used to cost less than 200 million isk currently if you want one of the market 270 million isk so quite expensive demos definitely breaking out as well up to 280 uh, and then the minbatar the munin is the one that's not doing all too well is that one being redesigned? Yeah, looks pretty cool though. And now we've got the, the Vagabond. Uh, that is at a one year high. Here we see a massive volume spike as well. Um, so there is a lot of interest for these Tech 2 ships. Let's go for the biggest ones. Like the Black Ops. Here's the Redeemer. And uh, this to me is a little bit surprising, but maybe uh, people are getting more information from CC. You also see that lots of the moon advanced moon materials are going up in price. And so as a response now, we see big volumes, even in these Tech 2 battleships as well, going for what used to be less than a billion, now around 1.4 billion. The widow is also taking off just in the last couple of days here. Currently, we're out of those. You, you pay almost 1.6 billion for a widow, which is 50% more then in normal times the sin is taking off the panther is taking off and all of this is uh, our, our yeah consequences of ccp uh, consequences of the expansion and uh, were nice opportunities for the market even the paladin here the marauders costing way more than 1.5 billion is actually pretty expensive chronos sitting at a one year high as well and then the varg are actually breaking out to 1.4 as well which normally costs maybe 1.1 billion or something like that so next to pi uh, which of course was a very predictable one uh, the advanced moon materials the tech 2 ships are currently rallying as well 
and so that was another opportunity uh, that you had to make some uh, isk on the expansion if you managed to buy at the right time admittedly here you should always have uh, held back a little bit because the volumes they uh, just aren't there right you're not going to make this trade a thousand times right now at the best possible price that's that's one thing to note when you're dealing with ships and then the final one that i also wanted to cover is one that I actually uh, saw posted that that took me by surprise a little bit we're probably gonna check it out with um with if talk as well but it's the salvage materials so apparently uh, it hadn't crossed my mind uh, personally, but apparently uh, in order to keep moon mining going, in order to keep the flow of tech to uh, moon goo going, they will need thousands of these refineries and uh, they will want rigs in them. And so people took a look uh, on CC, uh, what, what it was going to take to, uh, to make those rigs. And even the take one rigs uh, use pretty much all of this. And so you can see right here, massive volume increase. Just a couple of weeks ago, we could have bought these armor plates for 20,000 ISK. Currently I'm selling my stocks, which I've actually bought at, at these really cheap prices here for less than 20K. Um, uh, currently selling those for 30,000 ISK. The alloyed Tritanium bar is selling for 24,500, which used to cost maybe 16K. And so here again, um, artificial networks, very, very common, very cheap normally. So always costing like t less than 12 ISK. Is that right? Is it, is it really less than 12 ISK? <laughs> that's, that's a crazy one. Yeah, look at that. It's, it's 10, 11 ISK and it's currently selling for 30,000 ISK. That, that's a crazy percentage. <laughs> this one, this one is just, I mean, if you had bought your stocks just, just two weeks ago, uh, you would have bought these at 12 ISK a piece and currently they're being sold here at 30,000 ISK a piece. This is, is, is quite a crazy, crazy chart. Uh, percentage wise, absolutely mind blowing. And uh, that is quite interesting. Um, the uh, broken drone transceivers at a one-year high as well. Burnt logic circuits, apparently not, although volumes are up and going up in price. Maybe these are like so common that, um, that this one is not breaking out. Um, but we have a couple of these here, chart micro circuits as well. Uh, just five days ago or something like that was going for 1240, now almost double the price. And um, yeah, all of these, it depends on whether or not, of course, they are used in the rigs for the refineries. Again, the link with the expansion is, of course, uh, very strong here. Malfunctioning shield emitters, not bad. 3,150 just a couple of weeks ago. Normal average, let's say 2,500. Currently selling for almost 7,000 ISK. Very, very nice profits that you could have taken. And so this is definitely something that I'm still in the process of learning. I take small gambles here and there, but uh, I wanted to make this video to show you guys that stuff that CCP does and especially expansions, uh, they do mean these, these gold rushes to certain, uh, to certain, um, to certain uh, parts of the market, which, you know, for someone that, that anticipates on that a little bit can mean vast fortunes, even for newer players. As you can see, doubling your wallets, even tripling your wallet. And uh, well, I'm not sure which one it was anymore for the salvage materials, but uh, something like, yeah, what was it? 2000 times the price all of a sudden uh, is some of the crazy stuff that can only pretty much happen when, when CCP does something to the game. Very, very awesome in my opinion. Really definitely one of the interesting aspects of the player driven economy, something really unique to EVE Online. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, yeah, that this can maybe help some budding traders, some traders that uh, some people that want to do trading in EVE Online to get in on that action, to spot those opportunities a little better. This also means something to note here we can see that all of those goods are at one year highs uh, put all of that in total it's actually a pretty big chunk of the economy uh, it's not like the volumes are completely down the toilet either that means that this is sucking up lots of isk from the economy i think that that's basically what's contributing to the stall in the increase in price for plex another thing that i just want to uh, you know make you guys um, attentive of that uh, yeah plex haven't really been going all that much higher uh, in the last uh, month or so in september but we know all of this other stuff that has gone up that requires lots of isk this is possibly the reason so if you're expecting inflation to keep up 
who knows, maybe at the uh, time of the expansion, stuff might start to flow back into the Plex when everything settles down a little bit. Another gamble that you could possibly uh, take. And uh, there you go, guys. That's it for uh, this video. Hope this can help and uh, hope especially for newer players that uh, are looking to make a fortune trading that, uh, that this gives them some ideas to actually get the ball going. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you all next time. And oh yeah, I was I still need that for some of my some of my construction parts. Uh, oh, don't need that many. Well, we'll take him.